today we're going to talk about Gecko because Gecko came out and everyone was really super hyped to see Gecko. He was new, he was different, Wingman was cool, Wingman was cute, and therefore everything seemed like it was going to go great. Dizzy fell asleep whilst it was in your hand and that was also kind of cute and so... This just seemed like an agent that everyone was ready to love and play in this game. But then as time started to go on, people went a bit quiet on Gecko. His pick rates in the different BCT leagues have not been uh, super, super high. And the overall Gecko fanfare that kind of kicked off at the start of the release quickly kind of died. And now Gecko is an agent who probably doesn't see too much play. But then something changed. The gods answered our prayers and they got rid of the worst map in the game, Icebox, and they replaced it with Bind. And I made a video about Gecko on Bind and how I thought Gecko actually had a chance on this map because I thought that his utility and the way that his kit worked, you know, suited this kind of map and the way that Bind plays out in general. And then one team, thankfully, and then one professional team, thankfully, has answered my call and has begun to play Gecko on this map. And so we're going to take a look. Uh, whether Gecko is actually any good. And to start here, I'm just going to show you a couple different clips from uh, the two different matches that they have played so far here on Bind. Excited yet. Nicely yeah. done. We're, we're very disappointed he lost the pistol round, yeah. in fact. Did not like that very much. All right, Envy gets pinged. It's going to be hot peeking here. Here we go. <laughs> all right, all, all the little buddies running forward, the wingman and the doggy. Okay. Yeah, going in together. There's the boom bot, number three like Beastmaster over here with all the different animals coming out. <laughs> but if they are met with opposition, they can run the clock down a bit because, again, they will always come out on top on the utility trade. I mean, if they can bring out the safe wall, that is exactly what they would want. Yep. Let's see it. Sugar Zero looking to pee. Oh, no! And that's not going to be good for them on the start. Saya player just... And so obviously what we can see in these clips in both instances is just the absolute abundance of utility that they're willing to use, right? So we might get an early sky flash in here and then we're going to start to get the gecko utility and then we get a harbor cascade coming up this way as well. And now we're going to get the wingman coming out from them and the sky dog at the same time. And then the dizzy comes out and then they think about throwing a raise nade here as you can see as well. And this is really what this is all about, right? And this is how T1 play where it's just an absolute overwhelming amount of utility to come and take a space and we see in this instance that they're able to push team secret back pretty early but we saw in the other instance against Sata division how they use that utility to eventually turn it into kills and there is no way that you're taking this space from them and then the great thing about having this sky and gecko combo is we've got that utility ready to use again at a moment's notice and we can then just go and take the site. And one of the reasons that I thought the Gecko had a chance on this map was because you could do stuff like throw a wingman down, throw a dizzy in, right? Then once they both got to here and you've kind of come and cleaned this space up as a team, you know, you pick them back up, you then can very quickly come back and potentially even take another space, right? Like you could come across towards Hooker and do kind of the exact same thing where you throw them both in and, you know, see if anyone's there and then, you know, try and get kills and whatnot. You know, this is the kind of thing that you can do. And we haven't seen T1 do a lot of this where they take one space, come back, take potentially a, another space, and then, you know, again, pick them back up, and then you go on into the site, and, you know, maybe you plant with the wingman, and you send the dizzy in again. But these things are possible with Gecko. But I know what you're all thinking, because you're all thinking... Yeah, I know Gecko's good on attack sides. He's good on attack sides on other maps as well. I've seen it happen. But what about the defensive side? Because that really is where Gecko seemingly has had a lot of struggles. Well, this is the main way that T1 have managed to overcome those struggles with things like this, where we're in round seven here of the game against Zeta, and we've got a triple stack here with the Gecko, and these guys are going to go running out. And this is actually against a save as well. And so proactivity is a big part of their defensive sides. And you see it right there almost straight away, where we get the Dizzy there, you get a Sky Flash out, you're going to get a Harbor Cascade here. This is something that they do quite often, you know, maybe not to this extent, but they are very proactive across the map you know with different agents a lot of the time and gecko is often a part of that which means you can then go and pick your stuff back up and use it again right as uh, as they have done in this round and in this round zeta managed to get the spike down here 
uh, with uh, the Viper's Pit going on as well. Uh, but what we're actually going to get from T1 is they've actually just done a very deep sky dog back here all the way kind of through spawn. And now you see they're in a good position here where they're actually going to use the Gecko ult. You can just kind of see it coming out just there. You get a sky flash coming this way. The Gecko ult's just coming around the corner here. Actually manages uh, to detain two people there. So they just start spamming in and they find this kill on this jet who's completely detained and just is getting out of it. And that's going to give them the tools to actually manage to come and uh, win this round as we're eventually going to end up in a 2v1 where then they get even more use of the gecko there. You might have just been able to see it, might not. But they actually put a little mosh pit here, which meant that the Viper couldn't come back in. Then the Razor comes out. But then as this all kind of settles down and the Viper's pit starts to actually come down, in a second, what you'll see is they're actually going to use the Wingman to go and defuse as well. So they tap it there. They send in the Wingman. And in a situation like this, this is your perfect Wingman defuse situation, right? It's a 2v1. You're not quite sure where they are. So you don't want to give away a free kill. You want to be able to trade with each other. You've got the defuse coming in already anyway. And that means that they get the defuse. Wingman wins the round for them. And... And uh, yeah, T1 managed to win the round. But of course, especially at the pro level, pushing out every round probably isn't going to be super successful. So you're going to need something else. But Gecko on Bind in particular does have one something else. And that is the mosh pit, which we'll see here in round number nine, where we're in a 4v4 currently. Uh, there's 45 seconds uh, left on the clock. And uh, well, for Zeta, they've lost Sugar Zero, right? And I often think anytime you're playing this double controller with Viper and stuff and you lose your other controller, you'll often come back towards the Viper setup, right? Because it does give you some smokes. It gives you some control and it allows you to get deeper in towards the site. So that's exactly what they do here, where they come back towards the Viper wall. The problem for them is here and what they probably wanted to do is come in this way use the viper setup to get in deep as they have done there and then use the sage wall to just sage wall this off get the plant down and then we'll play 4v4 close plant and uh, you know we're probably fine but what's about to happen you can see we just got the harbor ult in there as well but what's about to happen is we're about to get this mosh pit and this mosh pit i think is going to be a big part of this round because crow out of all of the zeta players crow who has the spike and is the sage who you know probably wants to wall this off and just get the spike down is the one that's stuck behind this mosh pit. And there is no way he can cross once he's kind of, you know, back here and made this decision. There's just no way he can actually get in onto the site. And so what that means is that Zeta now are kind of stuck here, getting stunned. We see the wingman come out towards them as well, which will get shot. But it means that they kind of, you know, they can't just stay here and get stunned on the middle of the site because all the all of these sight lines are open, right? You know, they could get swung at any moment. So Depp has to try and come swinging back here, but he runs straight into uh, into ban there. So he's a free kill, essentially. And then they're basically just going to mop up from this position. It's uh, really, really good stuff. And Carpe even throws in a little dizzy above his head there, which gets a blind as well and manages to get the kill on 10. And yeah, he manages to even potentially pick it up. And we end up in a situation where, you know, this was a 4v4 and very winnable for Zeta, but it ended up unwinnable in part because of a mosh pit. And so this is a bit of a follow-up to my Gecko Hopium video that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. But I do think having CT1 play this uh, comp with the Gecko in a couple times, that there is actually some genuine hope. And I think with a bit more time and a bit more Gecko kind of mastery, as we've seen with Harbor, where Harbor has become meta on quite a few maps, maybe the same is in store for Gecko as well.